So today we are sharing our one year review of owning our truck camper. It's a 2023 Palomino Realite HS 1803 Badlands Edition truck camper. We bought it brand new in 2022, but it's a 2023 edition. So we're gonna share with you guys all the good we've had. And a little bit of the bad. Yep. So first we're gonna start with the truck. I'm gonna hand the camera over to Vince and he's gonna talk about how the truck's been holding up. Now, just to give you a quick little recap, we did do a full tour of this camper when we first purchased it. So I'll link that video here and it'll be in the description. And then I've also done two other videos where I've shared all the different upgrades we've done to our truck camper within this past year. And I did another video of all my favorite camper must haves. Three really good videos for you to go check out in addition to our one year review. All right, we have a 2015 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. It's a crew cab, so it's got the bigger doors on it. And this is a um, six and a half foot bed. So not the eight foot bed, uh, not the short box, but the regular size uh, bed. All right, I'll just quickly go over a few of the suspension mods we did. Uh, we put in the Bilstein 4600 shocks all the way around. Um, they've done very well. The factory shocks were a bit worn out. Um, just because this, you know, had decent mileage on it. And we did the timber and bump stops to replace the factory bump stops right there. Uh, they support the load a lot better. And then something I just did a uh, few months ago is these torque lift stable loads is what they're called. These support the leaf pack so you don't get as much sag um, in the camper. Um, so it's sagging about, I don't know, about just about two inches and now it's when, when you put the camper on it it only sags probably half an inch so if you look back at the whole rig you can see that it does not sag at all it's almost lower in the front than it is in the back so holds the camper up very well so overall we are really happy with how the truck holds the camper um, handles it handles the load of it the torque lift stable loads made a really big handling difference um, just because there's not the sag anymore so the boatiness kind of went away so you can really tell um, going around corners at higher speeds that it just doesn't lean as much on the corners so really help makes it feel safer um, I think it helps with the braking too even if I went any bigger with the camper I would probably get a bigger truck um, you know 3500 possibly a dually or a diesel um, but this size, you know, it's only 1,800 pounds, way under the payload of the truck. Um, so we're happy with it. So we have all these components on the outside, the outdoor shower, the electric plug-in, um, hot water heater, and we've had zero issues with any of that. Yeah, so, everything's working really well. Yeah, nothing, no issues with anything. The, the water heater is tankless. It takes a little bit to kind of get water going, but... It's probably the most critical thing when, like, winterizing it, but we had it last winter in Colorado and... We didn't have any problems with it. We ran antifreeze through it, so. Mm -hmm. All yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah, we haven't had to winterize it uh, this winter yet because we are, live in Arizona now. So. And it has a feature if it goes under 36 degrees and you have it powered on and have the propane on, of course, it'll cycle hot water through it so it won't freeze. Yeah. So it's got a freeze detection, but it has to be on. So. But yeah, so. it's worked really good. We've had no issues. So these have been awesome after struggling with what to do with steps on this because the steps aren't built in. You don't have really much room to mount anything to. So these are great. There's just a little lever here that you pull up and then steps come down and it's just mounted right to the hitch. And I have a few anti-rattle clips on here so it's sturdy and they've been great. A couple locks too so it can't be stolen because they're not cheap. Another reason we really like these is, as you notice, our door is not centered. It's off to the right side. So these are adjustable um, left to right. So, and up and down, of course. So this is where our 15 pound propane tank lives. Uh, one thing I did do, I um, got a longer bolt for this. It was pretty crazy how you had to really pinch this in to be able to get this uh, wing nut on here. So got a longer bolt, solved that problem. and. It's, it's fun to take in and out, but it's not too bad. <laughs> and we love this Mopeka um, tank level sensor that's uh, mounted on the bottom of the propane tank, and it's really accurate with the, uh, the amount of uh, propane that's in the tank. Um, since we run the fridge off of this, um, it's kind of critical, of course, 
but uh, obviously the furnace heater too, we want heat if it gets cold. So yeah, this does really good. And there's a, actually a gauge on the tank too, and it's showing about half. So it is kind of, you know, the gauge works too, but this really gets detailed with the, the level. And up here on the top, we have a Thule awning that was put on when um, we got the camper. And that works really well. We use it here and there, mostly if it's like raining. That's the only time we've ever really used it. However, now when it's we're desert camping more, I actually, we've been using it more because it does provide a lot of shade over that window, that main big window. Not only rain, but it's also good for blocking out sun to keep the camper cooler. So just regular camper maintenance on any camper, you know, sealing up exterior. Um, seals this needs some work we had to do this um yeah this circle seal is kind of kind of cheap so maybe it's time for a new one so that's kind of everything on the outside we've had zero issues the, everything on the outside has worked fantastic and we're very happy so far with everything on the outside. So now let's move to the inside. Also, just a quick note, I will link all the items we're talking about in the description of this video. So definitely check that out if there's something that you see that you're interested in. Welcome to the inside of our truck camper. We're just gonna kind of make a circle around the whole area and I'll tell you what's happened, um, what's held up and what has not held up. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the bathroom area. So we got our toilet and our shower here. So. Our toilet has been amazing. We've had zero issues with that. The shower situation though, I do wanna talk about the shower situation. So we can fully stand up in here. We are five, seven and a half and we can set up in the shower, no problem. However, you might notice we don't have the actual shower attached to the shower. And there's a reason for that. So how many of you have been here since we did SUV camping? If you've been around that long, you know what I did to have a shower out while camping with an SUV. I turned a, like a pesticide jug into a shower and that was one of the best little showers ever. And I know a lot of other people have liked it. I can see it on my channel. That is a very popular video that I created. So we basically took that shower and we actually use it in our shower here. Reason being, we have the tankless water heater. However, the hot water that comes through isn't enough hot water to keep a consistent hot shower the entire time. So I can't, I hate like having hot water showering and then bam, it's ice cold water and it goes in and out, in and out. So that's kind of a annoyance with a tankless water heater. It's not gonna be 100% consistent hot water the entire time you're running it. And it's a waste of water at the same time because then you're kind of waiting for the water to heat up again and it's just this whole back and forth thing. So we learned very quickly that the tankless water heater was not gonna do very well for showers and we're gonna go back to the classic SUV shower that we made. The shower itself works really good when we did use it. It was just the hot water situation more than anything. So this two gallon jug, both of Vince and I can take full hot showers with it. So basically what we do, we always make sure it's full of water. We take the water that's in here, we fill up a kettle, we get it boiling hot, we pour it back into the remaining water and it creates the perfect hot shower for both Vince and I. So we just set it on the toilet and we just use our shower here and we have a consistent hot shower the entire time. So if taking a shower while you're camping is important to you like it is to us, we are people who have to shower every single day. We just, you know, after hiking, being dirty, doing whatever we're doing, we just, we are ones that want a shower. And so if you're looking for a DIY shower that does an amazing job, check out this video. I do a full instructions on how I actually use it. We love it and yeah, we use it in our truck camper and it's great. Now one thing we did end up kind of doing, it's probably more maintenance than anything, is re -caulking this bottom pan of the shower. We did notice a small leak um, underneath one day, so I just put some more caulking around the bottom and we've had no issues. And then one other thing we noticed is this skylight. We noticed a crack in it because when it was winter time, we had some snow sitting on top of the truck camper and we saw water leaking in the bathroom. Thankfully it was in the bathroom area. Um, Vince got up on the roof and noticed there was a tiny little crack right here. I don't know how the crack got there, um, but basically he just cocked the crack and sealed it up and it's gone. One of the very first issues we ever had with this camper was the bathroom door. So there's supposed to be a sliding door on this bathroom and we had the sliding door for a couple months and we were heading to Arizona from Colorado and we popped in and the entire top of the door fell off from its hinges. So this is how it was attached from the top, the door 
hung on here, sliding back and forth. So we tried fixing it. It broke again the second time around. So we're like, you know what? We're just getting rid of the door. We have a nice shower curtain now. We don't have a, you know, a door here anymore, but it really doesn't matter. Um, it hasn't really been an issue not having a door. We never used the door anyways when we would shower or use the bathroom. So not really a big deal. It's just another small thing. This wallpaper is lifting just a little bit. Nothing too serious, but keep an eye on it. Yeah, at least it's not peeling off. It's still intact. It's just lifted a little and bubbled. We really don't have it anywhere else. Like under here, there's no lifting. It's just kind of mainly by that window where that's happening. So we replaced this window because the factory uh, window that had the, the screen and the slide in it was leaking when it would rain really hard. Water would pool in this area and we'd get, this would all get soaked and we you obviously don't want that. We brought it in because we still had a warranty on the camper. Um, they said they fixed it. They sealed up some things, still leaked um, on a trip after that. So we took matters in our own hands and replaced it ourselves and did a just a sealed window. So no sliding door because we never used any of the sliding feature on that. So we just did a sealed window. So nothing to worry about. And that kind of comes back to the warranty. So we had a one year warranty on our camper and we only had that. Well, we had the window and then we also had the, um, the remote for the jacks to raise the camper off the truck. Yeah. So yeah. that failed. Um, so we did get that that remote warranty we could still manually do the jacks it wasn't a problem yeah. um, but obviously the remote's better and the remote uh, was a couple hundred dollars so yeah that was, that was good that they that we they were able to fix that for us replace it full replacement of the remote so as frustrating as it was they supposedly fixed the window um and then it would find out it was still leaking it just kind of proved like we're glad we never got the extended warranty because we learned from just these few little warranty claims we put through what a process it is. We would have to drive it there, then leave it there so they could look at things. And then we'd have to come back, you know. Part was always for, on back order. Yeah, so. things were back ordered. And then we could bring it back home, but then we'd have to come back again so they could fix all the things. So it was like, you know, one little thing we needed done took, you know, a month and a half to do. <laughs> I can't imagine like what fixing this door would have been like. Oh, so no. It's like you kind of, if you own one of these, you kind of have to sometimes take matters in your own hands and knowing how to fix stuff is very beneficial. Yes. Because it's sometimes it's just easier to do it yourself so. yeah so example like that window we just yeah. replaced you know we already went through the whole warranty thing they said they fixed it it was still leaking um and we're like okay we're not going to go through this all again another month month and a half thing we're just going to replace the window ourselves. yeah out of pocket we were out another 200 bucks however for us to run down you know time <laughs> is money you know, running around, doing all this at the same time. At the end of the day, we'd rather just spend the $200, get it fixed ourselves, knowing that it's done and fixed and just be done. So <laughs> we're, we're glad we didn't buy no extended warranty because warranties are just more frustrating. So just a shout out to Motion Windows out of Vancouver, Washington. Um, they do custom windows, uh, really quality material. They hand build all of them. Um, you actually get a template. You have to measure everything out. Um, to like the quarter inch and then you send them the uh the details and then they, they custom make you a window so awesome windows our fridge has been really great we've been really surprised at how much we can fit in this small little fridge we can go two weeks with food in here and there's still plenty of room it's worked really good we've had no issues you know using it from propane or having it plugged in so we use it probably on propane more because we do a lot more boondocking now for the kitchen area this is kind of where a lot of the upgrade videos are going to come in because i feel like we upgraded a ton of things in our kitchen so we didn't like the original stove we've upgraded the stove to this flat top uh, great uh, domatic stove which has been awesome we have loved the new faucet we put in before there was just a little bathroom faucet in here and then we also removed the microwave to create extra storage this has been amazing so much extra storage in here so there's been no issues with any of this um We've had no issues with electrical, lights. So one thing I wish this water tank had, that's a sealed water tank. Um, you know, it does get corrosion on the bottom and, you know, bacteria can build up. We do bleach it every year to hopefully prevent that. But every time we do that, it, there's some um, contaminants that get stuck in the screen filter that you have to take out. Like, you know, black gooey stuff that, you know, just build up on the water pump. I wish it had a... Um, accessible so you could clean the inside of it. I've been contemplating cutting a hole in here and putting like a, I don't know, they make like those compartments for boats. Um, 
but I don't know, I just don't really want to cut into it, so I don't know what I'll do with that. Might just leave it for now, but that'd be a nice feature. So from our upgrade video, um, if you recall, all of the electrical systems that we upgraded, been really happy with all of that. The lithium ion battleborn battery, all of the new uh, charging systems, new solar charger, uh, battery monitor, um, change out the fuses, did some high quality fuses instead of the, the cheap ones they give you. <laughs> so. That, that needed to be done. That's the first thing I would do if I ever upgraded or changed campers like that. I just, they, it's terrible, the, the systems they put in these default. And another thing from the upgrades video that I did was um, we shared how we put insulation up here in the cab part of the bed area because we found out there was no insulation up there. That has been so nice. The temp up there is way more comfortable, especially we've noticed in cooler temps um, that insulation has helped a ton. So one year later, I feel like we are couldn't be happier yeah right? everything's really good like with the truck the camper like the whole setup it's not been more of a headache than like the the benefit of it you know sometimes these things can be more of a pain than they're worth yeah and we've not we didn't had know that. that going into it it yeah. could have been this know. is our first camper we've ever had like um so we didn't know what to expect going into this but i feel like we did really good. We really honed in to look at, you know, what we wanted in a truck and a camper and all the things and what worked for our budget as well. You know, you can you can spend a lot of money on different setups and on trucks and stuff. Especially truck campers, they're very expensive per yep. square foot just because they just, they're built. They and, just uh, are. There's lower quality ones. I feel like ours is middle and then mm -hmm. there's higher like the like adventures and arctic foxes. Yep, Lance. Are, Lance is at a pretty... But they're pretty enormous. Fun. Most yeah. of them are really enormous. But they do have some models like this but yeah. this one just priced out way better. And yep. Felt like quality was good. Yeah, we felt really, really good with this purchase and the truck and everything. And we've been, it's treated us so well. Yep. Like, I feel like we kind of scored on a perfect little setup for us for our very first time having a camper. There's no other camper right now or setup we would ever trade this for at this point. No, not right now. We've, mm. we've looked at other campers just for the heck of it at like different RV shows and we're like, nah. No, yeah. we don't just... like camper vans, don't like the trailer pull behinds because nope. you're limited where you can go. Yeah. There are bigger truck campers, but then it's just. Then you more need a weight. bigger truck. Yeah. And it, you know, you yeah. can always go bigger or better, but yeah. I feel like we just have a perfect little setup here. It's good to be happy with what you have. That's right. And yeah. we're very happy with what we have. And thankfully, we've not had any major issues. So. No, nothing that stopped us from traveling anywhere. Yeah. Everything's it's just all about maintenance. It's keeping up with things. You know, you're not going to buy a camper and it's hands off completely. Yeah. So knowing how to fix little things here and there is very beneficial. So I hope this helps if you guys are looking at any Palomino campers or, um, you know, Chevy Silverado 2500s, um, our setup. I hope this helps you guys. Um, I feel like a lot of the things we did was upgrades. So definitely look at those other videos I shared. We go way more in depth on a lot of things. Um, so those are really great to look at in addition to this review and how it's all been for one year. Yeah, so, so learned a lot. We'll keep learning a lot for years to come. So yeah. we'll keep you guys all updated as we go. So that's it. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Bye.